In this video clip, which would be the most likely continuation from the last one, we see a patient who has had attic retraction pocket and a small erosion of the attic. This is the patient. The incisions have been given and you've seen the exposure of the tympanic membrane. This patient has an intact past tensor and the bone covering the attic has been removed to expose the attic retraction pocket. The incisions of the canal wall have been given. The tympanomatal flap has been raised partly inferiorly. Now we see the probe raising the flap over the eroded portion of the attic and the retraction pocket. We use a cotton ball to aid in this elevation. Now with this elevation the underlying ossicles come into view. What you see is the body of the incus and lying in front of it would be the head of the malleus. The incuriostepidial joint is also seen to a certain extent. Therefore, this patient has an attic retraction pocket, maybe a limited colchitoma, which has now been completely exteriorized. The ossicular chain, thankfully, has been left intact with an intact pars tensor. Now, considering the fact that there is no colchitoma seen now, and the ossicular chain should be intact, and this patient having a preoperative hearing, which is normal, we have to try to preserve the intact chain if possible. You see now a better view of the ossicular chain again. That's the head of the malleus, the body of the incus. And now we are looking at the cora tympani, the handle of the malleus, the cora again. And we are now opening into the middle ear. The annulus has been elevated. You see the normal middle ear structures, the white structure you see in the center of your field at the promontory. And you can actually see the handle of malleus being moved to see the long process of the incus and the incuriostepidial joint. The promontory and the round window are also visualized very well. It's important to preserve the tympanomatal flap and therefore we keep replacing the tympanomatal flap again to ensure that it stays intact. A little bit of extra bone removal to help expose the anterior superior area of the retraction pocket. This can be done with a small cutting burr or maybe preferably with a small diamond burr. Now that retracted area of skin is elevated thus helping us to elevate that skin as well. Now this kind of finding requires that the scutum or the outer attic wall be reconstructed to ensure that the retraction pocket doesn't progress to become a full-fledged colchitoma. And for that, we must elevate this retraction pocket all the way down to expose the pro-tympanum or the anterior epitympanum, which is now quite clearly seen in your field. So the bone of the outer attic wall, which is still intact, which is still left, can be seen. The elevation of the skin has been completed to expose the anterior protempanum and we replace the flap to make sure that it stays intact. Reconstruction of the attic can be done or accomplished in a variety of ways. The technique we would prefer at the KKR ENT hospital would be the use of conchal cartilage again. The idea is to be systematic and con conchal cartilage can be used in various methods. It can be used to augment the tympanic membrane, it can be used to do ossicloplasty, it can be used to reconstruct the attic or to reconstruct the cavity. You see the exposure of the protympanum is now more or less complete. The flaps have been elevated and if you look at the whole picture at a higher magnification, a beautiful demonstration of the intact anatomy of the ossicular chain can be obtained. Now that's the cora tympani, the small ridge of bone which I preserve purposefully, the body of the incus, the head of the malleus, the handle of the malleus and the drum still attached to the tip of the handle of malleus, the promontory and the middle ear.
that is how the normal intact anatomy would look like and we are fortunate to be able to preserve this anatomy in this case. Now a piece of conchal cartilage has been harvested. It has been cut to the required shape as you see and you can see how snugly it can be fitted. And that's the use of leaving that spicule of bone behind. It helps in wedging the cartilage in place and the cartilage would stay in place, avoid any further retraction pockets or further colstotoma. We use a large temporalis fascia graft and a small nick has been made in the temporalis fascia as you can see very clearly. And this nick will slip in as you see above the handle of malleus, around the handle of malleus to ensure good contact of the pars tensor with the temporalis fascia. The tympanic membrane is now replaced along with the skin of the retraction pocket. This skin can be preserved and this preservation of the skin helps in early healing of the cavity. The flaps are replaced and it's important to replace them in corresponding correspondence to the initial canal wall incisions. Preservation of skin as I mentioned will help in early healing of the flap. And remember posterior canal wall skin is to be treated like 24 karat gold and there is no sense in sacrificing it unnecessarily. Since the tympanic membrane is normal, the past tensor is normal, there is no real need to use much of gel foam in the middle here. A small amount can be used if required. The rest of it is used to hold and maintain the skin flaps in place. And this patient, as usual, would have a sofracart gel foam pack followed by neosporin soaked in umbilical tape kept inside the ear canal for one week post-operatively.